Safety always first. Before exploring microbial habitats all, all over Svalbard, we had to make sure we know how to stay safe while on fieldwork and how to avoid potential hazards. With this knowledge, we could start to sample various microbial habitats and analyze them using many techniques. Like most of the courses at the University Center in Svalbard, Arctic Microbiology course depends heavily on the fieldwork. Each week we had an opportunity to explore different environments, tundra soils, freshwater reservoirs, glaciers or sea. Some sites are easily accessible and do not require much preparation. But some are further away and demand more effort in terms of equipment or, for example, require some additional manpower. Each environment required different sampling methods that we learned and then critically assessed limitation of techniques in our reports. Well, at all the field works, um, which were like the most interesting parts, of course, it was um, so nice to see, especially in the first week where we uh, tried to find some organisms in the, in the soils, um, that there is actually like life in such extreme environments and uh, especially the plants we saw on our way and yeah of course the microorganisms this is actually the most interesting part and um, that there's life here which actually adapted to this harsh conditions It's not very long ago that people used to think this is a lifeless environment and uh, um, and we discussed that glacier biome is something that is not even discussed in textbooks even now. So um, so this is this makes it special um, that even in low nutrient uh, and environments you can have different habitats for microbes to survive and um, I think in all the presentations or any seminar or any class that I attend, one always has to prove that uh, glacier biome is something that does exist and is something that is very important in terms of carbon cycle and albedo and fertilization of oceans through um, iron that is released from carving of icebergs. All of the samples were then taken to the lab for further investigation. The aim was to learn and use many of available methods. For centuries, microbiologists depended on culture-dependent approach, in which they studied only microorganisms that could be cultured in the lab. However, with the revolution of molecular microbiology, it turned out that only about 1 or 2% of microbes can be easily cultured in the lab. The rest is studied by culture-independent methods. We used both approaches together with microscopy to assure we have a broad overview of microbial life in each of the environments that we had studied. Um, all the field trips, you know, it was fantastic. Actually, going out collecting samples, um, you know, whether it's from, from marine samples, uh, soil samples, going to a glacier, you know, drilling through and uh, bringing, bringing ice and snow back to labs, to actually extracting things from samples, analysing the marine PCR and the uh, microscopy as well, uh, to actually get the data and doing the stats and actually writing the report of it. It's amazing to do the whole process from start to finish. Uh, for me, that's pretty exciting. Well, in Svalbard, you have a lot of different environments that are important for for microbial ecology. Um, I think you have all the different types of typical Arctic microbial habitats that you might also find in, for example, Siberia or Alaska. But you also have some very special habitats, some extreme environments, such as the, the old mining sites here. There are also some hot springs in the south of Svalbard. And so there's really a, high, a big variety of different interesting microbial habitats. There 
are so many different environments and such a like condensed space. So we have the marine, but it's not only one marine, it's a fjord and the salt water and the mix. There's so much water here and the soils are so different. So you have a big diversity. And I was actually surprised because I never realized how big the diversity is also in microorganisms itself, because when you look at Svalbard, it seems like nothing is growing there. But then when you take a closer look, you see, see the there are microbes everywhere in literally every habitat possible and uh, that's that's amazing i think um the most stunning was actually with uh, last week with the snow and ice that there's so much life and glaciers and surrounded by snow i i never really thought about that so yeah this was quite amazing to realize that there's so much life going on. Microbes have not been considered in the Arctic environment so far. They can always always this top predator and uh, whatever. And yeah, they really are the ruler of the Arctic environment. Not only the knowledge, but also unique memories and experiences will be taken home by all of the students. Amazing glaciers. Whales. <laughs> Undescribable. I think a big thing. <laughs> Fascinating. In general, I would say just amazing. Awesome. Special, I think. I would say friendly. Special. Uh, rocks? No. Quibbledge. It's my favorite chocolate from here. <laughs> Arctic is now changing rapidly. The temperatures are rising fast and Arctic creatures, including microbes, may not be able to follow those changes in a way they do it now. However, nobody knows how the future will shape ecosystems and nutrient cycling. I guess that this is especially important now to study Arctic and its microbial communities to really understand this environment, to try to predict what will happen in the future, and finally to explore unique properties of the seemingly invisible world of Arctic microorganisms.